Okay, Mark, please. Kia ora koutou. Uh, I live and work in the city centre. I'm involved in a lot of community initiatives with the overarching goal of making our city centre as good as it can be. I chair organisations to do with good governance of apartment developments, uh, to do with the performing arts, and I'm a JP. And today I have a list of pleas for you, another list. Um, please follow through on your goal for 20,000 residents in a vibrant city centre by supporting affordable, high-density apartment living and supporting amenities and green space. Please reinstate the free central city shuttle. We've been talking about this for too long. It will benefit not only residents and users of public transport, but also anyone who drives into the city and needs to get around once they're here. It's great that you're expanding the city vacant differential down to Sydenham, but please don't miss the gap in the middle. Uh, the southern fringe of the city centre is an ugly mess of empty lots, messy car parks and abandoned buildings. We need the right rate settings in that southern neighbourhood to incentivise development, safety and security. Please explore other rating options for the future, such as land value instead of capital value, which could incentivise more efficient use of land in the city centre. We've experienced a lot of crime in recent years. Please consider funding security cameras on the streets around large residential developments, such as on Wells Street and Dundas Street. Please reduce the speed limit on these streets. Uh, the speed limit on Colombo Street is 30, yet you can turn the corner and whiz down Wells or Dundas at 50. This isn't safe. I've seen some hair raising near Mrs. just in the past week. Um, please move more car parks to a user pays model to mitigate rates increases. Please ramp up investment in active transport and public transport in close collaboration with ECAN. This will reduce wear and tear on roads. It will improve the health of the population. It will help the council meet our climate commitments and it will save households money. Um, please finish the big anchor projects you've committed funding to, but now turn your attention to small projects which will deliver better value for money. Please ensure independent local artists have a place in the performing arts precinct. Amateur theatre companies have had to do without their own theatres since the quakes. Little Andromeda, the home of Fringe Theatre in Christchurch, is hidden away in a corner upstairs at the terrace. Um, the Christchurch art scene is dominated by big players. Artists from around New Zealand feel excluded and trampled on by the World Buskers Festival. Um, please explore opportunities for equitable funding that encourages diversity and unlocks the potential of our budding performing arts sector. Please prioritise our water infrastructure. An abstract promise for more spending in future electoral cycles isn't good enough. We need to lift our game on investment in essential infrastructure now. Those are my pleas. Hopefully I've left some time for questions. Okay, um, Andre, then Sarah, then Celeste. A year to please touch more on the Buskers Festival because this is really important. We've got a lot of local talent um, mm. and we're only utilising two weeks and we've got months over summer and we've got all these local artists that we could be exposing. Yeah, so I haven't been too involved myself, but I you know, talk to a lot of people who are involved in this and I know they've talked to Christchurch NZ and felt like they've fallen on, on deaf ears and, and that it's still just a festival which is, you know, bringing in a predetermined roster of, of overseas talent and a lot of people who used to be really involved in the festival in years past no longer have the opportunity to be involved and others who would like to get involved don't have that opportunity. And so it seems like the council really isn't getting value for money and there, there's an opportunity there to spend the money wisely and actually create opportunities for a lot of local talent that we have around the country. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Sarah, please. Thanks so much. Um, so over the last decade or so, there's been uh, a gradual decrease, though not by a lot, of some of the paid car parking in town on the street as other priorities have, have taken precedence on the road corridor. When you mentioned about um, moving out the paid parking, do you think that maybe we should look at how many um, on-street paid car parks we've lost over the last few years and expand the area a bit to, into those areas that have now got high demand but no metered parking? Yeah. So I, I guess first I was thinking of the proposal for in the parks, yep. which is great. But, I yeah, I do think 
first in first served isn't a great system and if there's a huge amount of demand there and it's costing us to service that demand then it, it makes sense to be reassessing the equation and making sure that the people who are benefiting from it are the ones who are paying for it yeah thanks thank you uh, Celeste please um, just noting your feedback around the hot pools being incorrect in the long-term plan, and I've just sent through a question around that. But the question is actually picking up on what Councillor Moore asked about in terms of the buskers. I take your point around it being more of a supporting local artists and things. In terms of the locations of it, do you have any views on where would be a good, like, would you like to see it in some of the venues within the central city or spread out a bit more? Like, do you have a preference? Do you have any idea on what works well? I guess it's a good opportunity to showcase more of the great venues that we do have that perhaps don't get that much visibility from all of Christchurch residents. Obviously, I'm closely tied to Little Andromeda, but because um, you get huge numbers of people through the doors from those events. So making sure we're sh showcasing Christchurch at its best. I, I, I feel like there's been a good balance in recent years in terms of indoors versus outdoors and and making the city center itself feel like a hive of activity would you be open to also Wait, having, one, one sorry question I, I was the question was really also in addition to the central city would you the be question, up for places like littleton question. and new brighton and sydenham and formby like open to the idea yeah, yeah. thank you Limwood. tim, tim well, please yes so i've been involved in this type of thing with buskers and entertainment in the city for most of my working life so in the past where you've had um, event concerts on a Friday lunchtime, Thursday night within the central city. We had buskers all the way down Worcester and Cashel Moors. Irrelevant of festivals, this was just vibrant every week. And the only thing would determine would be weather. And is any of that happening now? Yeah, so, the, um, so obviously last year we had the proposal to try and get something going in the performing arts precinct to make good use of that space while it while there's no money to build something but why that space why not the, yeah you know it's, this yep. is the most creative group of people in the city and i'm seeing nothing and it's and i'm saying it's, oh because 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 but but why yeah so why there are some happening? artists who try to do interesting outdoors things i, I think they struggle to build enough interests and i think this ties back to there's still a lot of dead spaces in the city centre and it's very destination driven. People are just coming here to yep. go to a specific place and and there's gaps between the destinations and we need to turn our thinking from here's a destination, here's a destination to the entire city centre is a destination and there's an abundance of, of things here to attract and retain people. I'd really like to keep Thank you, Thank you, Mark. Thank That's you. Great. Thanks for your time. Um, Jocelyn and Carolyn, please. 